Okay. Hi, I'm Margaret Young, and I was taking part in the Human Rights Global Agenda Council for the last two days. And like all the other Agenda Councils, we were discussing a new model. And our particular new model had to do with the issue of human rights and business. So very recently, the United Nations adopted a new framework on the topic of human rights and business. And the framework was intended to clarify what the responsibilities of companies are for human rights and what the responsibilities of states are for human rights. So to give you an example, um, in the world where international human rights law was framed, it was actually developed in, in a post-World War II era. And so the world was very much focused on states as being the potential violators of human rights, as well as states as being the potential greatest uh, defenders of human rights. But recently then, with the expansion of the multinational, you would have multinationals that would go all over the world and, and actually in many situations have more power than, than a state to affect and realize human rights. So at the time, there developed a blurring of, of uh, the concept of what the responsibility was of a company. I mean, does a company in a local area where the government is not present, do they have the responsibility to build a hospital or to build a road? Um, there are times when companies possess essential drugs or medicines that governments can't afford for the population. So we had, for many years, this outstanding question of what the responsibilities of companies were. And finally, it was taken on by Professor John Ruggie, who was the United Nations Special Representative on the topic of human rights and business. And over a six-year process, he developed this framework, which which managed to obtain a lot of consensus around the idea of companies with a basic duty to respect human rights. So that is to take all necessary measures to avoid infringing the rights of human beings, not just in their, their employment situation, so respecting the rights of workers, but also when they purchase land to, to respect the rights of those landholders and to make sure they're resettled properly, as well as in their marketing, distribution, and other practices. So he defined that scope as being the responsibility of companies. And then there was a corresponding responsibility of governments as well to take measures to protect people from corporate abuses. So to pass the right laws and to enforce laws against companies abusing human rights. And so with this framework, it went to the United Nations and was uh, it received a unanimous endorsement of the United Nations, which is, which is very unusual in the UN Human Rights Council. And then we as a group decided to take this forward and action it because at the moment it still sits within that UN space, which is very it is quite isolated. Not many companies know about this. So our group decided, how will we action this and raise awareness amongst business CEOs when they go to Davos, as well as action it within states to let them know their obligations in terms of formulating the right policies and passing the right laws in this area, as well as how do we action it in civil society so that the media conveys the issues correctly, that the NGOs are active around the right issues. So we get really that entire global model pushing for the adoption of this of this very new framework in the human rights and business space. So that's what our, our Global Agenda Council is looking forward to taking forward, not only in the Davos space, but also will remain active afterwards to try to take it forward within the individual company space and with industry sectors going forward.